Hello everyone, this is Enea here and in today's tutorial I'll teach you how to create this endless knot in Affinity Designer. The endless knot is a symbol coming from Buddhism and it represents infinite wisdom and compassion. Alright, so to get started we go to File New and we create a new composition. We give it 2000 by 2000 pixels in dimensions and we click on Create. And then we go here, we make sure that Snapping and Snap to Grid are enabled. And then we go to View grid and axis and we are going to set up the grid. So we check on show grid and then we go here to the advanced tab. For this project we are going to need an oblique grid. This is a grid made of square with an x and y orientation of 45 degrees. And we can increase the spacing a bit to 100 pixels. And then we can close. And then we are going to start drawing the figure so we take the pen tool. We set the fill and stroke to none. And then we go ahead and we draw a small square here along the grid in the upper part of the composition. And then we set the fill color to red, like this. And then we're going to use this first square to create the first square unit here in the upper part of the composition. So we press Ctrl J to duplicate the square. And then we bring it here. And then we press on Ctrl J again so that we have three squares. And then we select all three squares, and then we press Ctrl J to duplicate them. And then we bring it here. And then while holding Shift, we select this square here and this square here. And we press on Ctrl J to duplicate them, and then we move them here. And this creates one square unit. So we are going to need four square units like this here on the vertical axis. So in order to do so, here in the square unit we select all square except for the first square in the top. So then we select all the squares except for the square at the very top. And then we press Ctrl J to duplicate them. And then we move it like this to the bottom of the first square. And then we press Ctrl J to duplicate it again to power duplicate. And then we press Ctrl J one more time. So now we have four square units that we need for the figure. And then we're going to also to create the elements here on the right and here on the left. So in order to do this, here at the last square unit, we select all the elements while holding Shift, except for the square on the left. And then we press Ctrl J to duplicate them. And then we move them here. And then while holding shift we unselect the square here at the bottom and then we press Ctrl J to duplicate it again. So this must look like this, the duplicated figure. And we position it here. And then we press Ctrl J to duplicate it again and we bring it to the left side. We flip it horizontally and we position it here. And then here we select all the elements here except for the element on the right the square on the right, and we'll press Ctrl J to duplicate them. And we'll bring them here. All right, so now we have all the elements that we need to create the figure, to complete the figure. So now the next step is that we are going to unite the squares that we need united together with the Shape Builder tool. So in order to do this, we press on Ctrl A to select all the elements, and then we take the Shape Builder tool. We set the action to plus and clean up to none, and then we are going to unite the squares that we need united together. So starting from the square here, we unite all the elements here up to here. And then starting from here, we unite all the elements up to here. And then starting from here, you, we unite all the elements up to here. And then we unite all the three elements here. Then the three elements here, and the three elements here. And then we unite the elements here, the elements here, and the elements here. All right, so now we have united all the elements that we need united together. The next step is that we are going to create the gaps between the elements. But first we need to break the element here at the top, here along the line here, in order to be able to create the gap. And the same thing for the element at the very bottom. We need to break it here to be able to create the gap. So in order to do so, we select the element. We take the pen tool. 
and then we go ahead and we draw a line here along the line here of the grid and then while holding shift we select both the line and the element and then we go here to the divide operator and this breaks the object where the line was and then we're going to do the same thing with the element at the bottom so we select it and we take the pen tool and then we draw a line from here to here and then we take the move tool and while holding shift we select both the line and the object and we go here to the divide operator to break the object where the line was so now we have all the objects as we need them and we can start creating the gaps between them so we press ctrl a to select all the elements in the composition and then we go here to the contour tool so what we are going to do is we are going to shrink the size of the objects and this is going to create the gaps between them here at contour type we select meter because we need to preserve the square angles of the objects and then we lower the radius we set it to minus 5 so this shrinks the size of the objects and this creates the gap between them that we need for the figure and lastly we can add a thin stroke to the figure so we go here to the stroke color and we set it to black and then we go here to stroke and we set the stroke width to one point so this creates the stroke and lastly we can hide the grid so we go here to view we can uncheck show grid and we can look at the figure see if we are satisfied with it All right, so that was it for this tutorial. You learned how to draw the Buddhist and less not in Affinity Designer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Affinity Designer tutorials in the future. And until then, see you next time. Bye.